What's up, guys? How y'all doing today? Well, baby, if you are Sean Diddy Combs, the legal community is accusing you of covering up for who's the big fish. Y'all, if you guys don't know, of course, Diddy was sued. Now, Rolling Stones just came out and said 18 companies has distanced, distanced themselves. And a part of me was like, yo, does this mean 50 Cent's plan was working? Because 18 companies have completely dropped you or disassociated just yourself from them or disassociated themselves from you as it was. But y'all, I did some digging. And this is the thing that really caught my eye. Even though I think about 18 companies have disassociated themselves, 161 companies have still have decided to stay. And that's when I started asking myself, why? Why when, and listen, this isn't about whether Diddy, and this isn't about whether Diddy is guilty or innocent. From a business standpoint, when you have this much heat around you, it really don't matter whether you are guilty or innocent, baby, we got to step away until we figure out what's going on. You know, again, these aren't friends, these aren't lovers. It literally is like, I am with you to make money. I'm attaching myself to your project because your exposure is supposed to bring more money in. So out of, let's just say 200, well, a little bit under 200 companies, 18 were like, listen, we don't agree. We don't like the way you treat women. We don't like this. We don't like that. But 161 of the companies said, well, we'll just wait and see what happens. And I'm like, why would you attach yourself to the chinking ship, right? And then that's just one part. But then I started thinking about Mace and all those people. I know there's a clip circulating around that's like a few years old, but I'm like, why when Diddy is at his weakest, more people are not speaking out either from what he did to women or how he screwed over the men. Y'all, we keep looking at women, but it is rumored, again, has been independently verified, but it is rumored that a lot of Diddy's victims were men. And a lot of the ways people were able to get into these really bad 360 deals is because the same way there were models and bottles for men bad boy artists, just like it was for women. I'm just saying you didn't have to have a, a be a woman to fall victim to Diddy's stuff. And some people said he might even like that more. I'm just saying so why, why are there people on a free fall, okay, that are still sticking by them? And it can't be, oh, they're just blind. No, they're there to make money. So where do they think the money's from? And look at all the men of bad boy and all the people in the industry that are still on the Beyonce mute challenge because Diddy hasn't come forward. And then there's even more, right? Because even after you go after that, right? It's like Diddy and them, at least if you can believe what the streets are saying, still think that they can pull out of this. If you guys haven't noticed, the narrative is moving more and more away from what happened to Cassie to these women are gold diggers. Oh, my God. That's just what we did in the 90s or the 2000s. Is it that big? OK, maybe they keep trying to move the bar. But why is this happening? Well, if you believe the legal community or at least certain lawyers and when you read the complaint, they are saying that the reason everybody hasn't abandoned Diddy in droves and run for the hills is because there is a big fish, bigger than Diddy, bigger than anyone, that they, that Diddy and the rest of the industry, Diddy's trying to protect because this person's even bigger than Diddy. And that the rest of the music industry does not want to get on their bad side. And that these advertisers, not advertisers, these companies that are associating them with, Di with Diddy know that if they pull away, they might not be able to do business with this person. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Diddy's latest accuser. And I know every morning you wake up, there's another one. Literally the same one that's being represented by, there's two lawyers, Tyrone A. Blackburn, who is, well, Tyrone Blackburn, I don't know if A is the middle, which is representing two of the victims. And there's also Douglas Boigmore. Um, he's representing, he represented Cassie, and now he's representing one other victim. There's also another victim that is suing Harvey Pierre, but Diddy and his companies are also. So Diddy got like five girls saying stuff about him, right? Let's talk about 
the one that says that she was right <laughs> and that she was in a club in Detroit. I'm thinking it's 18 to enter, 21 to drink. She has a club in Detroit. Harvey Pierre literally was looking for an old Fanta orange can because <laughs> he had a hankering. So I'm not laughing about what happened to her. I'm just laughing about the ridiculous of Harvey Pierre. Took her into a bathroom, did this, called Diddy on the phone, said, yeah, he'll like you, moved her across state lines. Douglas Wigmore is saying that there is proof of this. But here's where things get interesting, right? Remember the part where they said that they took her into a, uh, they took her to a studio. Now, Diddy is placed at the scene of crime because there's pictures of the girl sitting on his lap. Douglas Wigmore said that when you see this girl, you have no doubt as to whether she is um, 18 to enter, 21 to drink. Do you know what I'm saying? In any case, right? Okay, so here's where it gets really juicy. So unfortunately for Diddy, there are pictures placing him at the scene. And there's not any way that you can explain it because how does she get from Detroit to your studio? We know Harvey Pierre was there. We know Diddy was there. Now, there's been rumors going around that Clive Davis is Diddy's handlers, his protectors. I don't know. Maybe they are. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have not been able to verify it, but who am I? Right. Um, who knows? This story has so many twists and turns. But the real tea is whoever was in that studio with Diddy and Harvey Pierre is said to be so powerful, so all encompassing that nobody wants to get on their bad side. So who is it? And no, I do not believe that Clive Davis was in the studio with Harvey and Pierre at four in the morning smoking crackers <laughs> and doing whatever. Maybe, but I don't think Clive Davis is so built for that. Maybe he was already in pop, like me mom, pop pop territory, grandma and grandpa territory back when this happened. I just, I just can't see it. But listen to what this lawyer has to say about it. Because I find this so interesting and I am going to Google and do some research and try to see if we can place it and place who it is. But whoever is this person that is not named in the lawsuit, they are saying this is Puffy's true protection. This is Puffy's true heavyweight. This is who everybody is still afraid of. This is who the advertisers do not. I'm sorry, the other companies associated with Diddy do not want to cut ties on. And this is who Diddy is even trying to see if he has enough money to pay to keep out of the limelight. Y'all, let's get into this. Where's this lawyer's um, thing? Okay, y'all ready for this? Let's get into this. These lawsuits very closely and joins us this morning. This one was filed under the Gender Motivated Crimes Act. And because uh, the plaintiff here was a... So, so yes. Diddy and, and Bad Boy Business Executive Harvey Pierre, they're both right. named in that lawsuit. But then there's another defendant in this in this lawsuit as well. But why isn't he named? Great question. So there's a third defendant. Now, usually, if you don't know the name, you simply refer to them as a John Doe. Okay. That was done in, in the prior lawsuit against uh, that Cassie filed. Here, specifically, they call it a third assailant. And there's a footnote that states they know exactly who it is. So the assumption and the implication is, is that this person is a major player with major pockets. And specifically, the petition states that they are willing to allow this person to remain anonymous until it gets to the discovery stage. The, the latest victim is also represented by the same law firm that represented Cassie. Um, not only does her team have all of the knowledge and know-how of you know, how Cassie received her settlement, but they also know those facts. They're going to know the insurance policy limits because they're suing uh, the same did, uh, entity regarding Diddy. And so that plaintiff is definitely at a substantial advantage. Attorney Simone Redwine has been following these laws. Okay, so that was attorney uh, Simone Bre Redwin uh, Esquire, um, a a attorney Simone Esquire. She is speaking. Now, you guys know I do disagree. I think that the insurance policies drop them because insurance policies do not cover illegal acts. And there is it, it doesn't even matter. We'll talk about that later. You guys, all these rumors that there is a big fish that is being protected. 
all these rumors that the other shoe hasn't been a drop. You know, at first when I saw all these people coming around to protect Diddy, I thought they were just trying to protect Diddy. But then I was like, why? Diddy is one of the big fishes, but there is somebody even bigger. They were in that studio with Harvey Pierre and Diddy that day. Who could it be? Is it another superstar rapper that doesn't want his uh, uh, image besmirch? Is it another industry person? It is it a Goliath? I am investigating this, but how else do you explain what is going on? Let's even think about the Rolling Stones, where eight. Teen companies have completely cut ties because they find Diddy revulsive. But even if you don't personally like it, like I said, like I said, even if you don't personally like them, it doesn't make sense to attach your brand to something. You can literally lay low until the court is over. You are paying them for exposure. And right now they are giving your cup. Do you want Diddy drinking your water, walking around, doing things? Do you? No, you don't. You do not. You just absolutely do not. So what is going on? Why are those 161 companies still sticking by them? Why are they saying, well, we're going to wait to see how it turns out. Why hasn't young Mom Miami completely abandoned him? Why are all his industry friends still coming around? Why does it seem like Diddy is operating like he's going to come back from this? Again, who is Diddy protecting? Again, I've heard the Clive Davis stuff. I, it, I just don't think that Clive Davis was in the studio with those people. I just don't. So who is it? Who's the mystery person? You guys, I'm going to be up all night researching to try to get to the bottom of this. Best believe. But again, like everybody's been saying, this Diddy stuff goes deeper than anybody thought. Y'all listen, I know I'm starting late, but this is going to be a heavy upload light night. And let me know if y'all want me to go live because I think it's time we actually went through the full 19 pages of that criminal complaint. Anyway, y'all, I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.